Academy of Art University's K-Art News is next. Coming up, one species has already been affected by the drought. We'll have details. And the story of the four-footed victims of rising costs here in the Bay Area that are looking for new homes. The yellow brick road that's helping kids in the Tenderloin travel safely. And you'll meet the woman who has a special emotional reason to want the violence in the East Bay to stop. All that and more coming up next on K-Art News. Good evening. Thanks for joining us here at the Academy of Art University's k Art News. I'm Colin Wright. And I'm Joshua Lopez. Here's what we're working on this evening. Get ready to watch your tap. You may be having a cut in the water by up to 36%. And that's the goal that state's water agencies are aiming for as a result for the fourth year of drought. Governor Jerry Brown has mandated it drastically, the water cut use. Dead lawns and dirty cars may be in the future, and the final decision will be coming on Saturday. If you're a sardine lover, you won't be getting any fresh ones from the California coast in the near future. Regulators have banned commercially fishing from them next season in hopes of restoring sardine life in the ocean. The decision came about when a number of sea lions began floating to shore as a result of not having sardines and anchovies to eat. Federal scientists say sardines declined 91% along the west coast in 2007. The conservation organization Oceana has been fighting for more than seven years to lower the sardine take and enforce stricter regulations. The agreement by the Pacific Fishery Management Council to stop fishing sardines is a big deal because it is the largest on the west coast. Shelters are bombarded with unwanted pets all the time and pets adoption is still common. It has appeared that more than more people are rethinking their pet commitments. Enosh Williams has more on the story. While it may seem these pups are resting comfortably at home, they are in fact resting here at this local SPCA facility after being left behind more than two weeks ago by their previous owners. I personally could never imagine getting rid of my dog and it definitely was something that I had to think about once I moved into the city about a year and a half ago. And I know a lot of people who have had to get rid of their dogs and take them to shelters because they couldn't afford to live in the city. And even though this is considered to be a shelter, the animals are in fact treated with the utmost care they participate in daily activities and are walked two to three times a day. Pets are being dropped off every day here at the SPCA. Why? Well, some might have overcommitted and some just can't afford them anymore. I spoke with the VP here at this location to discuss. People drop off pets to our shelter every day um, and it's, it's for every reason imaginable. It's, you know, the dog got too big, the cat scratching the furniture, um, the, you know, the parents got divorced, the kids got tired of the animal, the, um, kids are allergic, you know, the landlord found out. You know, finances could play a, a, a factor, and you know, it might be something that's a little embarrassing for people to say. Keeping some of the smaller dogs at least um, social with other dogs so they're not alone, and they do get constant contact, and uh, with the windows and everything, it gives them a chance to really see people and, and things like that. Some animals remain at the shelter for more than a year before they're adopted, finding themselves attached to those who care for them regularly, in and out of the shelter. I live alone now, except with the cat, and um, she, every time I go out and come back in, she's at the door waiting for me and, and calls to me when she hears me outside. And <laughs> for more information on this facility, visit PeninsulaHumaneSociety.org. In Burlingame, California, I'm Enosh Williams for the Academy of Art University's K-Art News. And if you are interested in volunteering, visiting this local SPCA, PeninsulaHumaneSociety.org. A sea lion is missing in Los Angeles after a group of people kidnapped a sea lion pup Sunday morning at a Los Angeles beach. Two sea lion pups made their way on the Dock Wheeler State Beach where a witness said they saw a group of people harassing the pup and throwing things at them. Then they took a blanket and wrapped one of the pups in, in it before putting it in the trunk of their Honda Civic and driving off. The second sea lion pup was able to escape and ground and group and was later found trying to make its way back to the shore, where it was picked up by a marine, a marine animal rescue. An eight-year-old boy is safe after being taken from his family's home earlier in Fairfield this week. The father, the father placed his son in the backseat of a car while he was parked and running while, the, while he ran back into the house quickly, but meanwhile, someone stole the running car with the boy in it. 
After realizing the boy was in the car, the thief abandoned the silver Toyota Corolla two miles away from there. Uh, earlier, their eight-year-old was returned home safely. San Francisco's Tenderloin District has its own version of the Yellow Brick Road. KR News reporter VNA Austin explains how the road will help with safety and parents and their kids. The Tenderloin Safe Passage Route is a visually designed route through the Tenderloin, which covers 11 blocks most frequently traveled by youth and families. Starting at the Tenderloin Recreation Center, the path continues to Jones and Eddy. Kate Robinson is a council member that began this pathway. Um, this has been a long time in the making. We've been meeting, um, working on this project since 2008. So today we're out here doing the visual part of Safe Passage, which is the, the safe route. Um, it's kind of the yellow brick road. We're, we have a local artist named Sylvester Gard who came out, uh, came up with the design. When I was homeless, I was like almost a preteen. Like I just learned to follow the flow of power. Back in them days, there was no safe passage, and I'm happy that that I can help design a safe passage for the kids out here. You know, you know. So it went from being like a normal art job to you know being something uh, a job from the heart. The route is marked by a yellow brick road sidewalk mural. It identifies the safety zone for children and families to walk through. The pathway gives a sense of relief for teachers and principals like Jeanne Dowd knowing that their students can get home safely. Um, and so by having a pathway where um, there are trusting adults along the way that are watching out for them in an area that can be um, sometimes dangerous um, for the kids and sometimes um, just sort of unknown is really important. It helps to create a sense of uh, independence for the kids. Um, it gives them the opportunity to get out and be in their neighborhood and learn uh, about their neighborhood, about their neighbors, and the community around them. During school hours, the route will have trained and uniformed volunteers monitoring high-risk corners. In the event of a safety concern, these corner captains help direct children and families away from danger. In the Tenderloin, I'm VNA Austin with Academy of Art University's K Art News. If you'd like to volunteer, contact. Supervisor Kate Robinson or Tenderloin Recreational Center. A local church group in Oakland has taken to the streets with their picket signs. They are calling on all citizens to take a stand against gun violence in the East Bay. KR News' Terrell Butler has more. We are the soldiers against Soldiers Against Violence Everywhere, or SAVE, is an Oakland-based organization made up of church leaders and community activists. They come out to different streets in Oakland once a month, spreading a message of peace on the streets. What the rally is about all today is just bringing awareness to our community about the gun violence and the, the violence that's taken the, uh, many people's lives here in the inner cities. Chance of enough is enough and put down your guns, throw up your peace signs, were repeated loud and proud at this intersection in East Oakland all morning. Oakland residents like Tylon Sizemore was among the people chanting. She says she knows firsthand what it's like to lose a family member to the violent streets of Oakland. I lost a loved one, 14 years old, and and I was there. So it, it changed. Yeah, it changed everything. The children are our future. We don't want to keep seeing them gunned down. And, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's wiping our future out when we keep killing our children. Like, and we're allowing this to happen. So, whatever I can do, I'm doing whatever I can do. Oakland's homicide clearance rate is down to 26%. And that's one third the national average, 63%. And there have been at least four murders in this area alone. And we normally go to the area where the homicide takes place. So we can let the people that live in that particular area that there was a homicide. And then there's people out there that's really tired of it. In Oakland, I'm Terrell Butler for Academy of Art University's K-Art News. Oakland police say the number of murder cases have gone down in 2015 but it takes a community involvement to solve homicide crimes.
the East Bay wants rent control folks after the Bay Area's more progressive cities such as San Francisco, Oakland, and Berkeley pass rent control laws, much of the rent in, of the East Bay wants the same protection. Advocates are making their case to the council members of, in Alameda, Richmond, and Fremont. Rent control could safeguard ten, the thousands of low-income tenants who are at risk of eviction or displacement. Look, San Francisco is an expensive place to call home. Rent prices are, although through the roof, right now, and residents are fed up with it. Mayor Ed Lee has put on a bond for a November ballot to help combat high rental prices, $250 million affordable housing bonds, key part of the mayor's plan, building 30,000 housing units before 2020. The bond needs two-thirds vote to pass. Rent prices in San Francisco are three times higher than the national average. According to Trivia.com, the average rent increase across the country was 3%. San Francisco's rent has increased by 10%. Rent is so high in San Francisco that the price of the rent of a one-bedroom studio can cost you over $2,000 a month. The situation in San Francisco continues to be bad. Cana Field has more. Rent in San Francisco has skyrocketed. A place like this in the middle of the Tenderloin offers a studio apartment for now $2,000 plus dollars. When before, about two or three years ago, rent used to only be $1,200 to $1,300 for one studio apartment. San Francisco is now one of the most expensive cities to live in, beating New York City. With rent on the rise, what are most people who can't afford to live in this expensive city going to do? I live in the church district in a studio apartment, around 500 square feet. I'm paying $2,100 a month currently. My lease comes up at the end of this month, and unfortunately, I uh, overheard my landlord talking about how he's gonna raising, they're raising the rent to about $3,200 a month, and I can't afford that. I can barely even afford $2,100 a month, so. The drastic increase in real estate has begun pushing a lot of people who can't afford to live in San Francisco out of the city. One local landlord posted this letter stating that each tenant must make a minimum of $100,000 a year, plus have a FICO credit score of at least 725, and they will no longer be accepting co-signers. Realtors are stating that the increase in rent is due to the high demand of people who are willing and able to afford these prices. And while tech companies continue to grow, so will real estate prices. In San Francisco, I'm Kana Field for the Academy of Art University's K-Art News. Ricardo A.R. is here to catch up with what's going on here at AAU. San Francisco's Tenderloin neighborhood just got a bit more colorful, thanks to 13 murals that highlight the area's historic past. Several Academy of Art University students and alumni spent 1,200 hours researching the district's past and creating the murals. In addition to providing the canvas, the site of its substation, PG&E also provided the art supplies. There's still time to mark your calendars for Xenophilia, the Academy of Art University's talent show extravaganza. The free event will be, on May, will be May 1st at 79 New Montgomery in the theater. Doors open at 745 and the curtains go up at 8. And lastly, congratulations to the Academy of Art University's Urban Nights Radio staff. The station, which is only two years old, has already become the fourth most listened to college station on iHeartRadio. In addition, the station just launched an all sports and talk network. Connor Smith, host of the Connor Smith Show, even managed to get the Giants three World Series trophies in the Urban Nights Radio studios. You can take a listen to all the great shows using the iHeartRadio app or by logging on to urbannightsradio.com. Let's get them to number one. That's it for this week's AAU Report. See you back next week. Thanks, Ricardo. We have a bit more about our Urban Nights. Kayla Pritchett is here with an athlete from the County of Art using her hairline to help better the community. Hi, we're here with Atia Harvey. She's a member of the women's track and field team, also one of my teammates, and she's also a part of our comm department. How are you doing today, Atia? I'm doing pretty good. I just worked out today. I'm feeling nice. Well, that's great. How's track? Um, you know what? It's coming along. 
Right now, I kind of have a setback. Um, I recently kind of strained my hamstring, but um, oh, really? I will be back in, uh, this upcoming weekend for Drake Relays. Oh, yeah. I will yeah. be doing the 4x1 relay. I'm first leg, and I will be doing the 4x4, four four, and I'm second leg. So I'm pretty excited. Yeah, Drake is, Drake is so exciting. And the crowd, you're, you're going to have a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. So your hair looks really nice. Thank you. What do you Thank use? You. Well, I kind of use my own thing. Um, I have this line called Coco Soul. Um, it's like a moisturizer, it's a shampoo, conditioner, all that in one. But right now, I kind of did some twist outs. I rolled it up last night, you know, and I took it out and it's just flawless. <laughs> it's flawless, like Beyonce. <laughs> so what, what made you want to start your own natural hairline? Like well, you know what? My mom, she was a beautician and um, she always used to do my hair. And then she came to a point where she wanted me to find out how to take care of my own stuff, so I did my oh, own nice hair. Too. Unfortunately, you know, I wasn't doing the correct things to keep it healthy, so it kind of broke off. And then I branched out to use other products. Now, the other products that I started using, it wasn't healthy for my hair. It started to break off, it was dry. So I started doing my research and I found out that, you know, I need a moisturizer. So I came up with my own line called Coco Soul. So guys, Atia here is doing this for not only to help you guys out, but to help out young, young kids and young women that are trying to be beauticians. So tell us a little bit more about, you know, the where your proceeds go. And well, um, it's... It's going to support organizations for young women who, you know, want to launch their own natural kick. You know, the same thing, the same route that I went. So 50% um, of the profit goes to these organizations for these young women. And I feel like... She's great. <laughs> I feel like that's the best way to go because I see a lot of people trying to be their own entrepreneurs. And that's a beautiful thing when you want to start with your own stuff. So I would not mind, you know, helping out other people just like I had helped my own self or my mother. Keep the line going, you know. <laughs> what would you tell any young women out there about starting their own business or, you know... You got to have confidence and you have to move with from within. Like if you have you have to believe in yourself because if you don't believe in yourself, who is going to believe you? Oh, that's great. That's great. Guys, learn from Atia here. If you want to check out her line, just follow her at I beautiful at on Instagram. And thanks for having us, Atia. You're welcome. Thank you. You're welcome. Thanks, Kayla and Atia. In professional sports news, the San Jose Sharks Seven-year coach Todd McClellan are mutually agreeing to part ways. McClellan and the Sharks have constant regular season success, often being one of the best teams in the NHL. However, the playoffs are filled with only feelings of disappointment. To add more fuel to the fire, the Sharks missed the playoffs for the first time since 2003. McClellan will lead the Sharks at the, as the all-time winning coach franchise history. San Francisco Giants fans are not only one to celebrate in the new season, KR News reporter Matt Seska takes a look at how the Giants affect business surrounding the stadium. The 2014 Giants ended their season on a bang, winning the World Series, bringing in much more fanfare. But also with that comes greater expectations and higher anticipation. I think when you have raised a bar like uh, we have, uh, you know, you, you want to maintain that standard and uh, you know you have a, a lot of eyes on you and you know people uh, you know they look at you as the best so you know you, you want to go out there and, and uh, hopefully perform well and uh, have a good year and I'm here right in front of Momo's right now where as you look behind me there's already a decent crowd starting to gather and the Giants game is yet to be over this just shows the amount of people and business that the San Francisco Giants bring into the city you know being right across the street from the ballpark Having a, having a baseball team that does well and has won World Series, you know, three out of the last five years, definitely helps business. Um, you know, in, in terms of in terms of numbers, there's there's just more there's more people. They're excited. You know, it's their it's their night to go out. It's their night to have a good time, and you know, they want to come through and, and have some food, have a couple drinks, without having to pay a bunch of money across the street at the ballpark. Not only does the giant success affect the businesses around but also the workers at the establishments as well. So during the off-season, we'll carry about a skeleton crew of probably 15 servers and 10 bartenders. 
and during the baseball season, uh, we, we end up bringing on 10 security guards, five on each side. Uh, right now we have 30 bartenders and we have about 50 servers. So there's about 80 people in the building. Uh, not at one time, obviously, but I mean, the business just, it, it's, it's crazy during the baseball season. So we need as many people as we can get. In San Francisco, I'm Matt Seska for Academy of Arts, KR News. Head over to SanFranciscoGiants.com to see when the next games is and join us, join in on the fun. It has been a big week for sports with the Urban Knights. Here's Whitley Sandretto with this week's sports. Thanks, Josh. Academy of Art University's women's, women's tennis team had a big weekend at the PacWest Tournament. It was their best ever finish at the Pacific West Conference Championship Tournament. This all comes after their 5-3 upset win on Friday over second seed Hawaii Pacific. Senior Jenny Johansson and Lucia Zarevskova, who were the heroes in Friday's upset win, got the Knights their lone victory Saturday. The Urban Knights have to wait to hear if they are one of the three teams selected to compete in the NCAA Division II West Region Championship. The women's tennis team isn't the only AAU team turning heads. The Urban Knight softball team is setting some records of their own. Through 50 games played, Academy of Art leads the Pac West in doubles and officially set the program's new single season record passing last season's mark of 74. They are currently third in the Pac West in batting average, runs scored, and runs batted in. This past Sunday, Academy of Art and Hawaii Pacific split the Sunday doubleheader. After the Sharks put up five runs in the final two innings to win game one, nine to four, the Urban Knights didn't give up. In the sixth inning of game two, the Knights broke up a four to four tie when sophomore outfielder Haley Curtis came up to the plate and smacked a deep home run. Art U came out on top, winning game two, six to four. I went up to the plate with a clear head. I wasn't thinking about anything. The about was honestly kind of a blur, but she left it just hanging there. And it Awesome, so I went for it and I had I didn't even know it went over. I watched her. The Urban Knights look ahead to one final home game against Notre Dame Dean Muir, which also would be their senior day celebration. It was also a busy week for the track team, both in Southern California and the Bay Area. The track team was in Southern California for a pair of meets, and there were some records set on the women's side. Mystic Scott took the spotlight with her 400 meter dash. She set a personal record with a 55.69. Her time was the second lowest run by an Urban Knight to date and was good enough to qualify her for NCAA Nationals. While most of the track team was in Southern California, a small group of RU track and field stayed in the Bay to participate in the annual Cal State East Bay Chabot College Legacy Invitational. Shabari Bailey was one of two men to compete in a pair of events placing second in two rounds of the 110 meter hurdles as well as the 400 meter hurdles. On the women's side, Kayla Pritchett finished among the top 10 in the 400 meter dash. That's all I have for this week's sports. Tune in next week for more of your Academy Art University Urban Nights. Thanks, Whitley. Speaking of sports, have you been watching the Cleveland Cavs in the playoffs? The returning King James and the possible NBA title for Cleveland. Let's go to Herman Pratt for the fourth for the perspective of all of this. LeBron James, an NBA superstar, talks about himself coming back to Cleveland Cavaliers. He has made it to the postseason for the 10th straight time. Now he plays with a team that never has made it to a postseason. But with the help of Kyrie Irving and Kevin Love, he believes that he can bring back an NBA title home back in, to Cleveland. LeBron is a little scared if you ask me because his teammates have never made it to a postseason yet. Although he's a superstar, I think he can make his team do their best and make it to the next round of the NBA playoffs. This is a whole new ball game for Coach David Blatt and this year's Cleveland Cavalier team. This can be the 10th straight year in a row for LeBron James winning the first round and advancing to the next round. Despite the conflicts James had with Love, they both still have one goal in mind and that's to make it to the NBA Finals and win it all. LeBron James and the Cavs have three, have their mindset and ready to make a statement for themselves. But hey, that's just my opinion. Thanks, Herman. Cody Young joins us with, with, it, with the latest on entertainment. Thanks, Josh. Hi, and welcome to This Week in Entertainment. Lots of big things happening this week. 
The boys over at Lizard, Broken Lizard Industries have been hard at work getting ready for the long-awaited Super Troopers 2. The sequel to the now infamous film about the group of state troopers has finally become a reality after they exceeded their Indiegogo campaign, raising $2 million for the new film in just one day. They have now raised $3.7 million to date. The series will include a whole original cast and they're up to their old shenanigans. The movie is expected to come out in early 2016. Silicon Valley is back with its second season about the small tech company Pied Piper as they try to grow their new business. The group of characters clash with billionaires and big name companies in the show as they seek funding for their new company. The upcoming episode 3 looks to be nothing short of great. The series featuring many Bay Area locations. Check it out. Richard, I'm an independent businessman. Emphasis on independent and business and man, come to think of it. Russ Hanneman, true pleasure to meet you. I watched your whole TechCrunch thing online twice. That whole spaz thing you did, that was priceless. Does he actually smile like that with his upper and lower teeth at the same time? How does he even do that? Han Solo and Chewie are back after 32 years in a spectacular second trailer for Star Wars Episode 7, The Force Awakens. The Imperial Star Destroyer crashed on the surface of the desert planet Jakku are sure to get any, get any fan excited for the next film in the series. strong in my family. My father has it. I have it. My sister has it. You have that power too. The film includes classic terror characters including Luke, Le Leia, and the robot couple C-3PO and R2-T2. The film opens December 18th of this year and fans can't wait. Thanks for tuning in for the entertainment. We'll see you next week. Thank you, Cody. That wraps up it for this edition of Academy of Art University's K-Art News. For everyone here, thanks for joining us. I'm Joshua Lopez. And I'm Coleman Wright. Have a great evening and enjoy your weekend. See you back next week.